we're an unscripted show, so we do not have an entire script ready to go. I was extracting from what I was already talking to people about and then developing content around the concept. Everybody starts somewhere. We just started putting out content. Once we hit 99, we were so excited. Yeah. And then once we hit 500, we were so excited. Thousand, yeah. same way. Yeah. There were some times where I felt like, I'm like, this guy probably hates my guts right now because I'm talking so much through in different meetings and on the podcast. Just keep generating content. Keep putting content out there. You don't know what your favorite video is or what you think will hit is never what hits. Our journey to 50 episodes, we're going to go a little bit off uh, of real estate and talk about this podcast and the secrets that we've discovered recording this podcast for 50 episodes. It's hard to believe. Yep. I think my when we first got started, I was thinking like, I don't even know if we're going to have content for five episodes, mm -hmm. but we just knew that we had to keep going week after week after week. And we just committed. It's like, hey, look, this is a this isn't a five episode thing, a seven episode thing. This is a 10 year thing. And I think we just said, we're doing it. We're yeah. Gonna start. I mean, just like real estate, you just have to get started. <clears throat> right. Yeah, exactly. And so as we're crossing that one year mark or the 50 episode mark, we want to just take some time and share with you guys what we've learned on this journey so far um, for you guys that might be thinking about doing something similar in terms of podcasting and, and getting your brand out there. And we talked to, you know, even from an agent perspective, just from a build, you know, building your business and what that looks like. So hopefully you guys can take something from this. Um, as always, make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, we are filling seats for Six Figure School. If you don't know about it, go to the website, type on Six Figure School, learn all about it. We've got an eight-week boot camp, and we're having a lot of fun in those classes. And yep. so we'd love to have you guys there. Okay, so let's talk about first the content <laughs> or, or creating the content for this, which I think seems daunting when you're getting started but actually i found that that it hasn't been as complicated as we maybe thought it would be no and and basically uh, uh the the kind of the relationship here is i'm responsible for just generating the content we might go some back and forth but i'm kind of generating a an outline um you're responsible for the video stuff and the editing which i think is part of our secret weapon is that you're so knowledgeable on on video and editing and <clears throat> how to make this stuff work on a from a technological perspective. So I think that works uh, well, or that's a good balance between the two of us. But in terms of the content, I mean, really, I think I was just ha thinking back on conversations that I was having over the course of the last week with real estate agents. So I was taking, I was extracting from what I was already talking to people about and then developing content around a concept. Yeah, same thing with the lender episodes, right? Yeah. So we just, the conversations I'm having with buyers that are on the lending side, it's just, yeah. it spills out into an episode. Yeah, and so we would just develop the content. It's it's interesting, I think, um, the, the you know, it could have been like something that I'm frustrated with or something I'm like, I'm tired of having this conversation over and over again. Or it could be something that's like, okay, well, and so a lot of the, the, con or the content was, generated around what I would say to one person, not to 50 people, not to be like, to go too broad. It was like, I would talk to just one person and share with them what I would tell them. And that's how we developed. Well, content. chances are if somebody's having that problem, a lot of other people are too. So exactly. So there was that, um, conversations, things that I kind of got frustrated with the, uh, common issues in the real estate industry or, and really the prep for that was about 15 to 30 minutes. So if I knew that, or I learned that if I could just start typing up a concept, that ideas would come up around that concept. Yeah. And we are an unscripted show. Or, yeah. or I'm, I hope I'm not getting too far ahead of myself. No, you're good. We're, we're an unscripted show. So we do not have an entire script ready to go, which is um, there's a lot of different podcasts out there. Some people do generate an entire script and work off the script. We right. tend to listen to podcasts that are more conversational. And I tend to like podcasts with more than one host because they are conversational. It's not yeah. just one person talking to the camera, which can get very dull. Yes. Um, so I think it works really well because we're just, there's a lot of back and forth and not just a lot of education teaching, like straight in your face. Yeah, exactly. And I think we have a lot of like just general very similar business principles or understanding of how to do business. So that worked well together, but we didn't go, I mean, we didn't spend hours like practicing, talking back and no. forth. I mean, basically it's 15 to 30 minutes. He's like, Hey, do you like these notes? And then can we riff on that? 
And that's basically what it was is we have. So if we're looking at right now, I've got like one through five with some supporting, um, you know, notes uh, on each of the five kind of concepts. And then we just riff on that throughout the course of the show. And also, I don't think we were scared to get out of sequence with that. Yeah. If it was conversational, just let it flow. So we didn't get really restricted in our conversations with each other or or get too tied to the content. Just like you said, it's like, I don't know if we were going to talk about this, but let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. And, and I, and, um, but to your point, that's one of the things that we said from the very beginning is like, look, if we really try to script or over edit this, we're not going to do it because yeah. there's too much work. It's a ton of work as it is. Yeah. And we have, we each have favorite videos or least favorite videos. Mm -hmm. Almost always we, we agree on our least favorite videos. And that's the one where in, and, and they're usually not episodes, but more like, testimonials or commercials where we're very scripted and we yeah. hate those. We yeah. look back at them. We're like, we look dumb. Yeah. I don't like scripting stuff. So it just feels very unnatural. It's not how we talk yeah. or if, even if we teach a live class, we don't script everything out. We, yeah, that, that's exactly right. And I, that's not how I want to interact with the world. Right. right exactly. At all. I don't want a heavily scripted, you know, um, overly, you know, prepared classroom situation. I want to have a conversation. Um, this next concept or, or this next number, uh, just kind of getting it out to the masses and what software did we use? That's really a question for you because I have <laughs> <Yeah>. no idea. <laughs> At some point, I would love to do a studio tour. Have you ever seen those? That's like, a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen those like uh, back back of the office, like where people just show you everything uh, in the in the studio and how yeah. we do things? I would love to do one of those. This is not that episode, um, so I'll just speak to it. Um, and I can put you know links in the description to a lot of the tech the tools and technology that we use so that you can go out there and find it for yourself because yeah. a lot of people do like starting podcasts and it's a great way to expose yourself to to the world but um so we use a roadcaster pro 2 as our piece of hardware and again i'll link to it below but our mics are all plugged into that and that's what records our audio so there's not a lot of post processing on the audio side i don't yeah. have to do a lot of editing we don't cut anything out as we just talked about so yeah. the audio is the audio that is all recorded on that one device with these two microphones that you see in the frame. And then, um, you know, we have three cameras, which I think we're, we are going to talk about that part later. But, um, and then the software that we use to syndicate it to the world, to all the different platforms. So all the audio platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that, that's called Buzzsprout. It's very cheap. It's like yeah. 12 $13 a month. And if I get maybe I can just get work, reach out to Buzz, Buzzsprout and tell them I'm doing them a favor here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, Buzzsprout is uh, is the tool we use. I think it's like $12 a month and you can upload uh, several hours worth of podcasts in that one month before it resets. Um, but that syndicates you everywhere. So you just, oh. uh, you have a, a feed with them and they push it out for you, which is super easy. That takes care of our audio. And then uh, to get to YouTube, we're recording with the three cameras. We're recording the audio separately. The big challenge is getting all that to sync up on the back end. So yeah. you've got separate audio from the video. You're not recording the audio on the video. So um, you sync those up in the back end. And then you um, you do a lot of post-processing on the video side yeah. to push it out to YouTube. Yeah, I know it's been a ton of work. And then also on the YouTube, like like creating things according to YouTube algorithms in terms of like um, doing the chapters and doing you things that YouTube likes so they'll push your stuff out to more people. Yeah, those are the kinds of things that are like – probably my least favorite yeah. of the show. I, like, I love recording. This is Th yeah, this our is fun, favorite yeah. time of the week almost, just, just sitting in front doing the the podcast. But my least favorite is getting it on to YouTube. So it's like, you know, you do all the editing, you load it on YouTube, you've got to come up with a title, come up with a thumbnail, load the description, do the chapters, which means I have to re-watch our video, yeah. and then go, you know, timestamp out every single chapter which to me it's like i've already heard myself say this i don't want to watch it again there were some times where i felt like i'm like this guy probably hates my guts right now because he's listened to me for like i get sick of the sound of my own voice you know sometimes i'm like i don't even want to hear myself talk because i'm talking so much through in different meetings and on the podcast or maybe listening to a podcast to, to take notes but I can only imagine you're like, God, I'm so freaking sick of that guy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sick of both of us talking. And then, you know, my kids will come ask me a question. And I was uh, like, I had the timestamp and then I lost it. And I'm uh, like, oh, I got to go back and find it again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's probably my least uh, favorite part of the creation process. But we're getting ready to offload that. Hope, you know, a year yeah. in, hopefully, God willing, hopefully. we'll offload it. But um, 
anyway, but yeah, getting it to, uh, and then we found that we had the most success, I think with YouTube. Oh yeah. I mean, we're 1850 ish subscribers on YouTube, whereas yeah. we, we put a lot of effort in on YouTube. So we're 50 episodes in, in 52 weeks. Yeah. So we've missed two weeks. I think one of those was last Christmas and yeah. last Thanksgiving or something like that. Right. So we're very consistent. And with YouTube, consistency is key. Yes. But once you have all those long form videos out on YouTube, you can chop them all up and put them out as reels, as as YouTube shorts, as things like that. To So you can put out, you can sprinkle out content throughout the week. Um, but yeah, we're far more consistent on YouTube. We're not very good on the social media side, which we need to get better at. Yeah. But um, yeah, that consistency is key on YouTube. Yeah, I remember though, even getting that subscriber count, which brings us to point number three, I was like, we had 99 subscribers and I was so excited that we we're going to hit 100 subscribers. Yeah. And my kids were like, I'm going to go hit it. I'm like, do not touch, do not, I want that's it to fake. be organic. Yeah, that's fake. I don't want a fake subscriber. And so I remember those little, like going from, from zero to 100, 100 to 200. The thing that was interesting, and, and we had heard this before, is like zero to 500 is the hardest. And then after that, it gets a lot easier. Yeah. And so I remember those big moments of 200 and 300 and 500. But what we found is we had just two episodes that took off and they were around like secrets or things that what were they like 10 things your broker doesn't want to tell you or 10 things your lender doesn't want to tell you. And there That's was right. enough like secret sauce or, 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 you know, it's like a little bit secretive or it was sort of uh, the title was just right to where it got pushed out a ton. Yeah, it was interesting that it was those two episodes. It's funny that you referenced those conversations about 99 because I had somebody reach out to me kind of randomly that just said, hey, I noticed you guys have quite a few subscribers on YouTube. Um, how did you do it? And I yeah. kind of referenced that conversation. I was like, well, everybody starts somewhere. We just started putting out content. And once we hit 99, we were so excited. Yeah. And then once we hit 500, we were so excited. Thousand, yeah. same way. And then we woke up one day and it was like 1,800. So yeah. Um, it feels like it kind of happened overnight the, the, with those two episodes taking off. We went from like 250 to 1500 very yeah. quickly. Like that span of time was very quick. But yeah, you get these like you're you're kind of your little bit of time, little bit of time, big jump, little bit, little bit, big jump. And then we're right now we've kind of been we're we're gaining subscribers, but still it doesn't. There's been times where it has moved like rocket. Fuel. Yeah, yeah, we our our last big jump was like the 1500 mark. So yeah, we're, we've kind of trickled up 300 or so, and then hopefully there's another big jump, but you just never know. I think that's the point is just keep generating content, keep putting content out there. You don't know what your favorite video is or what you think will hit is never what hits. Right. Like some of the videos that we've done, I'm like, Oh, this is a winner. And you know, we might've gotten a couple hundred views, but another one, you know, pops off at 5,000 and you're like, why? Yeah, what happened there? Well, even that one, that the first one that took off, which was 10 things your broker <clears throat> doesn't want to tell you. Um, I remember walking in just going, like, I wasn't sure about the content part. I was like, I think I just want to do like, yeah, I, I wanted to vent about, you know, because I'm doing meetings with real estate agents all the time. And they have this sort of same like idea about how to do real estate and how they want to tackle it. And um and an idea about how easy this is going to be or how much money they're going to make. And so I was like, let me just kind of like be real with people and just tell them. So it was just kind of a little bit of pent up frustration, but it, I guess it just really hit right. And people yeah. loved it. Well, and what I would say is again, consistency is key, but don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. When you're starting out on YouTube, one camera eat, very easy. Don't don't go go straight to three cameras and yeah. expensive lighting setups and all that. Just start very small because what we found and and this is this applies to real estate, other businesses. Right. The more you complicate it, the less you're going to wake up and do it. That's right. And so you just want something that's going to allow you to pump out content at least once a week. Start there, and then as you get in a rhythm and a flow, and you and your workflow is like set, and all the processes are aligned then start expanding. That's yeah, how we that's did just, it. Yeah. And that's just life, life and business. Um, you know, it never moves as fast as you want it to, but you just need to like do it to where we, we just did six figure school. We were talking about open houses and how great they are, but don't make them so complicated. You don't do it. Right. I mean, right? the our first few episodes, I mean, the camera angles aren't the, the cameras that we were using aren't, weren't great. Yeah. The angles were poor and, um, you know, we didn't have like any, the set didn't look this way. And yeah. so it, 
Um, and I, I will say, honestly, a lot of the podcasts that I follow or watch, and, and I'm looking at them through different eyes, but they have 10 times the number of subscribers that we have and not the production value that we have and not a cool studio. So really, it's about content consistency and patience, right, more than it is having everything perfect. Content is king. Co- content's I mean, everything. If, yeah. you're, if your content is good, people will find you, people will watch, people will listen if it's audio-based, but content is king no yeah. question um the improvements that we make made over time so number four was like hey what improvements did we make over time and our concept was like hey what can we do to make this one percent better every week whether it yep. be one percent better on the content the title thumbnails you know whatever the case may be we just wanted to keep like sharpening that uh our approach and so I want to talk about the improvements that we, that we made and one of them is we started with a broad shot and we tightened the shot yeah. and that was a big one yeah yeah so we started um we actually started across from each other and we had cameras going different ways and uh you know the backgrounds were uninteresting and yeah. like uh, so a lot of that was fixed with kind of the new set yeah. and that was something we wanted it was like the main set to look a lot better so where the backgrounds darkened but we've got a sign mm-hmm. and we've got uh lighting on the appropriate places on the front uh part of the stage and the the mics look better things like that those yeah. those were small improvements like you said one percent better yeah my personality didn't didn't let it go like the first few episodes I was we were just trying to get them out there and I was like oh, I can't put yeah. that out I was like I gotta fix this yeah well that was one of the things is you were you were always very diligent about trying to make that better from a camera angle perspective and then um so yeah it was just just tightening it um yeah. over time the other one was like just talking on camera. I remember at the very beginning of this, like I had to have bourbon because I was just so nervous or I was felt like I was going to stumble too much or whatever. So I needed yeah. to kind of loosen up a little bit. Especially when you, you were, we're both like flying off script. I mean, yeah. this is like just a total random conversation in front of cameras and yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I just remember being nervous and that part got so much easier over time in terms of like when I watched it back, a lot of the things that I thought were just terrible don't really show up that much or where I was like, Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. And it, it was never as bad as I sort of concept the, my concept of it was, it was right. like, Oh, it just a little stumble. And I thought it was just the worst thing or that we went off track. So that was the first thing is just getting comfortable with that. And the other thing was just like getting feedback and people liking that it was real, yeah. that it was conversational, that we had the mess ups, that it was so, that was the other part of it. It's like, well, people like that. Yeah, I think it's like public public speaking where you're like, oh, I bet everybody could see my heart beating out of my chest. Yeah. Or see, and <laughs> yeah. nobody really notices. Yeah. I mean, you you obviously were aware, but nobody really noticed uh, anything out of the ordinary. So I think that's true here too. I mean, you watch it back and you're like, oh, I bet we messed that one up pretty bad. And it's never as bad as it no. seems. And, um, you know, usually the conversation flows pretty well i mean some episodes we like more than others but some we'll listen to or our friends will listen to and tell us hey that was like really engaging like we liked that one then um so yeah like i said every episode's a little different it hits a little differently but um overall i think just start making content and you will get better you're gonna get better it just it's gonna take practice and we you know we know we're not even perfect now we're far from it but it's just like we're just going to continue to do it and, and perfect our conversation and content over time but you watch people like mr beast and they say the same things like your first hundred videos are going to (laughs) suck like they're going to suck really bad Mm -hmm. but you're going to get better and you're going to learn a lot of things in your first hundred videos and we're not even at a hundred right um and just from there you know you get exponentially better yeah uh the other thing was like and you i wouldn't suggest this to everyone coming out of the gate but when we one of the things that we learned over time is that once we put those the two additional cameras in where we have these direct shots um the everybody was commenting about oh it feels so much more personal we got uh, that a lot yeah. we, so once we put those others so they didn't say hey there, there were better camera angles or the camera angles were more close in and so it uh so i paid attention that you guys do that they're not paying attention to that they're just going something about it made it feel more personal and they it was really consistent once we released the different camera angles yeah and that actually wasn't my intention with putting the extra camera angles in was to make it more personal mine was to make my editing life easier which you always say hey i bet your editing life sucks now that you've got three cameras yeah it's actually not really that true because a lot of the things i was trying to solve for and i don't even think i've ever told you this but probably not like if 
cameras have autofocus and we're getting a little detailed, but as you lean up, if you want to like touch your laptop or something and focus, it might focus on you and then make me blurry. Well, mm -hmm. I can just cut to my camera or your camera to save that. Right. So that now one of us is not out of focus and it looks stupid. So it, it helps me to like fix it, little issues with the main shot when we have individual shots. And that was my primary driver for it. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I wanted was when we chop this up into smaller form content, like reels and shorts, yeah. it, that feels more personal that so I wanted that vibe. Like if I'm right. going to do a reel, it's going to be the tight shot, not the wide shot, because exactly. it's, you can't do a wide shot on the reel. So that was my main driver. But from there, it was like we did get that feedback. We got, hey, this is more personal. It feels like you're talking to me, like yeah. things like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, we found out that the lists or the or you know your title, like if we said five things or ten things or whatever, we got a lot more. Um, it, once we kind of distilled it down to points, we got more. Um, subscribers and we got more attention and so uh, or anything that was like a secret of something like things that your broker doesn't want to tell you that got a lot more attention too so a lot of we spent started spending a lot more time into distilling into points right like specific points and also that it was good for like reels like if i was trying to make a point or if i had something that i was uh recapping that was a would also make for better short form content and then it was better for the title too. So yeah, anything that's secret gets a lot of attention. Anything that's like five things or 10 things um, gets more attention because your, your descriptors, like people are like, oh, what are those? Like, yeah. what's the, what are the 10 things or what are the secrets? The only thing you have on YouTube for people to click on your video are the title and the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. That's it. And if they're scrolling a feed, they see a thumbnail and they see the title. And sometimes now YouTube starts to play the first 15 seconds. So you might see the first 15 seconds. So you don't have a lot to get someone's interest to click. So we try very hard to make the title interesting. We're not good at thumbnails. We haven't found a great thumbnail yeah, editor. Know. If you guys we know don't. somebody, send it to us. Um, <laughs> but so we know the thumbnails suck. But, uh, you know, the title, we try to make it interesting, but not clickbaity. We yeah. want to deliver. So yeah. like if the title says... 10 things your broker doesn't want to tell you. We want the content to be 10 things we did want to match it. your yeah. broker doesn't want to tell you. So we try very hard to deliver on the content, but you do have to try to make your title as interesting as humanly possible. Yeah. One of the other things that we found is uh, in the, from a YouTube algorithm perspective, and this is maybe kind of going a little bit off of the, off of our notes here, but like the faster you can get into the content, the better, right? That's that like basically YouTube is, gauging because you're going to have a drop off at the very beginning anyway uh, from somebody when somebody clicks on your um on your video but the more the quicker you can get into the content the longer you're going to keep people that's right and so we had like we started out with like a long intro and like here's who we are and all that stuff and the further we got down we just shortened it to like where it's yeah, you have to nix all that. If you, yeah. uh, and again, I don't want to keep talking about Mr. Beast, but um, he's the best in the game as far as retention. Like his videos have the highest retention on YouTube. And it's because he has a title, he has a thumbnail, and then the first 15 to 30 seconds of the video are exactly what he told you they were going to be from yes. the title and the thumbnail. And he does a very good job of making interesting videos for people. Mm -hmm. So like the first 15 to 30 seconds is very interesting so that it keeps your retention through the rest of the video. That's the like what you're trying to do with delivering on the content you said you were going to create from the thumbnail and the, and the title, and then just playing it out in the video. Yeah. Um, and then also like our, we do shorts and, and by the way, you guys go follow us on Instagram. We really want to up our following there, but um, we hired through, we outsourced the shorts. So we basically like gave, what, what do we do? Do we give them the, the, um, yeah, that's another one that's challenging on my end. But we go through, we went through Upwork actually, not okay. Fiverr, but same concept. But uh, we found someone who, basically, you give them a list of timestamps and they will create shorts from your long form content. Mm -hmm. It's again just like so tedious Very going tedious. through a long video trying to find, you know, fifteen to sixty second shorts throughout. And um, it's interesting; they're doing a lot more research on this. So people tried to get shorts from sixty seconds down to fifteen. And now places like TikTok are allowing longer form, like even longer than 60 now. Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing the average length of those start to creep back up. And so now in, on some platforms, it's like 70, 80 seconds. So, um, you know, they never know exactly what to create. Sometimes you can't effectively get your point across in 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. 
Um, then the last point was uh, number five was like, what mistakes did we make? And I think the first thing that I would say is that uh, I don't think we, either of us really viewed anything as mistakes. It was more like, Hey, this is what we learned from this deal. So we weren't like, Oh, we shouldn't have done that. Or we shouldn't have done this. It's like, okay, on the next one, we were putting out so much content, like putting out content every week is by the way, that's a lot of content to put out. Mm -hmm. I mean, to create and put out every week. And I had a date like on Tuesday afternoons is when I would generate the content um, for the podcast and some other stuff that we had going on. So, um, but we were like, we were putting out so much content that we could be like, okay, well, we'll do that better next week. Yeah. Right. And so if we did something that we weren't crazy about, well, we're just going to fix it on the next one and we're going to stay, we're just going to stay in the flow here. So it was just like lessons that we were learning. Uh, and then, we weren't afraid to just like, hey, okay, great. We learned that moving on. Uh, so to move on from those and not to like obsess about it or be overly perfectionist. Um, but the okay. second thing in that was um, one of the things that I wish we would have done differently is I wish we would have spent more time or, or equal time on the social media with the YouTube because there's a little bit of a mismatch. I think we have like 230 followers on uh, Instagram, but we have 2,000 almost or 1,850 on YouTube, which that should look like 10,000 on Instagram and 1,800, yeah. you know, based on if we would have been putting out the content consistently, but it was just a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. That's another just case in point for consistency. Like we might go a week where we put out a reel every week and then we yeah. might go a month and not put one out. So that's just consistency. There's just so many areas to focus on when, you know, you got a business like this and you know, you, you're trying to run YouTube, you're trying to do these three uh, social media platforms, just something ends up getting dropped. Yeah. And typically for us, that was our least favorite social media. So yeah. social media got dropped. But consistency is key. If Even if you can only start on Instagram and YouTube or Facebook and YouTube, start on those and do them as consistently as possible. Yeah. If we're reflecting, that was our biggest miss was like we did not put out consistent content on our social media platform. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um the other thing is uh, release days for the podcast. So we learned this um, like Fridays, not worth it. Yeah, we yeah. have a, we have, I mean, and every, you know, industry is going to be different. Like if you're reporting on uh, like maybe your YouTube channel is all about the newest iPhone and maybe Fridays is a great day for you. For us, it didn't seem like realtors were watching YouTube on Fridays. So, uh, you know, there's, there's analytics and data that can tell you when your subscribers are on YouTube for us. If we release anything on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it gets far fewer viewership and right. um, retention than if we release it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we try to stick in that middle of the week. Monday hasn't been bad either, but I think it feels like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning is the best because that's when realtors are the most dialed into their business and that's where right. they want to learn. Uh, even when we teach classes, we do those on typically Tuesday or Thursday just yep. because that's where you're going to get the most engagement. Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, any other sort of things that you would tell someone who's like, hey, I want to get into this. Um, how do I get started or what should I do or just, anything else? Just to start. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, for we talk, the first time we talked about doing a podcast was like three years ago. Yeah. And we were at dinner in, I think we were in Oklahoma. Okay. The first time we went to Oklahoma, we were at dinner. We were talking about it. We're, and you said, I used to run a podcast a long time ago. And I'm like, well, I used to run a YouTube channel. And so we got to talking and then we waited two years before we got started. Yeah. And, you know, finally it was just one of those days where we're like, all right, we're not waiting anymore. Yeah, we just we're have just, to do it. We're just going to start. If we don't do it today, we're not going to do it tomorrow. So right. we just put out the first episode and then we just said, we're, this is something that we're going to set aside the time for every week. And we did. And mm -hmm. the consistency helped. Yeah. And it's been really great, you know, just generally for business because, you know, even from a business owner perspective, it just helps people get to know you. So when they go Google you or looking into your business or whatever the case may be, they can get to, they get some sense of who you are through those things. So like when we're talking to people, whether I'm, um, they're joining the brokerage or they're joining six figure real estate school, they're a lot warmer, uh, than someone who's completely cold, cold. Like they, they already have things to draw from in terms of understanding what we do. Yeah. And even outside of that, it, I mean, it makes us better problem solvers. Yeah. So we're, you know, I pride myself in being a pretty good problem solver, but I get better because we think through every single problem we encounter and then we have to think through it enough to talk 
about it to an audience. Yes. And now we've gone through every single minute detail of this potential problem and how we would solve it. Mm -hmm. And it makes you think of other ways you could potentially solve it. So we get better at real estate just by talking about it more. I would say that. And then also like when we're teaching, we're better teachers because we've spent so much time distilling information into something that people can absorb. That's right. Um, So anyway, speaking of, we've got a whole year of classes that we're going to do live and uh, we'll start doing video as well, but that's exciting. We'll let you guys know about that through the email platform. Uh, Anything else before we wrap up? I don't think so. Okay, guys, hopefully you learned something from this and, uh, you know, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, Hello at theagentbridge.com or you can Google and find our phone numbers and reach out to us that way too. (laughs) too. All right, guys, everybody have a great, uh, great one. We'll see you next week. All right.